When he felt a little better, he worked steadily, leading his mule back and forth along the rows of wide green leaves. As soon as his sacks were full, he led the mule out of the field and saw Easter in the distance working side by side with Wilson. While Obi emptied the leaves in the barn, he heard John and Martha's wagon rattle into the yard. He was relieved that they were back. He also heard Wilson calling to his brother. Instead of rushing back out into the hot sun, Obi took a few minutes to bundle a pile of leaves. Wilson came into the yard and started talking, but Obi couldn't tell what he was saying. After tying the leaves, Obi left the barn. Wilson and Master John were waiting for him. Martha Jennings, in her somber black dress and bonnet, stood behind the men. Her long, thin face looked weary and blank. Jason staggered under an armful of wood, stumbled into the yard. He almost dropped the wood when he saw Martha. Mistress, I... She put her fingers to her lips. Take that wood into the shed and go bring Easter here, Jennings ordered, and bring me some rope. Jason walked unsteadily around the barn to the shed and then ran off for Easter. Obi started to leave the mule back into the field. You wait here, Miss Master John said sternly. Jennings' high, sharp cheekbones protruded out of his face like two pieces of granite. Obi's hands became wet and clammy. He tried to form the words in his head so that he could tell his side of the story, mainly that he grabbed Wilson without even thinking. He didn't look at Wilson standing next to his brother, but he caught Martha's eyes for a moment. Though she didn't say anything, a softness in her look told him that she understood how he felt. When John and Easter and Jason walked into the yard, Master John glared at the three of them. Jason handed him the rope. When I tell y'all to stay on this land, I mean it. I wasn't doing nothing wrong, Master John, Obi protested. His wide nostrils fared slightly. You wasn't working when you were supposed to, and you put a hand on my brother. Some would beat you to an inch of your life for that. Some would even kill you, he said, never taking his eyes off Obi. Wilson started removing his belt as John turned to him. Twenty-five lashes. Give the other two five apiece. Easter and Martha both gasped, and Jason looked as if he were ready to fly out of the yard. Martha stepped up to her husband, clutching his arm. Give them extra work, or don't feed them tonight, but don't beat on them, she pleaded. He pulled his arm away from her. Hush, woman, you the one who spoiled them. Martha clenched her teeth and walked quickly into the house, slamming the door behind her. Wilson grinned with narrowed eyes at Obi. Take your shirt off and stand under that tree. Obi silently obeyed him and stepped under the beautiful magnolia. Master John tied Obi's hands around the tree. Jason was already sobbing as he buried his head against Easter's thigh. Easter put her arms around him and stared into space. Wilson raised his arm. This is what happens when you put your hands on a white man. The cracking sound the belt made when it hit Obi's flesh seemed to echo throughout the farm. Obi bit his lips until they bled, but he would not cry out. He wanted to scream, the way his mother had screamed, but each time the belt cut his flesh he kept one thought in mind. I put a mark on you too, Wilson. Easter heard the lashes but never watched. She gazed at the blue sky and tried to listen to the songs of the brownish-gray mockingbirds. Jason kept his head buried in her dress. When Wilson finished, Master John untied Obi. He slid slowly to the ground. Easter made a movement toward him, but Wilson grabbed her by the wrist. He whacked her five times on her legs with the belt. Her eyes filled with tears that spilled over. But she made no sound. Jason also took five lashes with his arms wrapped around Easter's small waist and his face hidden against her stomach. Obi watched Wilson beating them. His inability to help Easter and Jason hurt him more than his own lashing. These is war times and people is dying. I ain't going to have y'all coming and going as you please, Master John warned. Everybody get back to work. Jason, you better stop crying for I give you something to cry about. You go in the field with Easter and Obi, and you work. Don't want to see you just tote and water all day. Wilson had a satisfied look on his face. He watched as Easter helped Obi to his feet, and the three children trugged into the fields. Jason clung tightly to Easter's hands as they walked. The sun burned into the welts that were beginning to rise on Obi's backs. back. When they were hidden among the tall tobacco stalks, Obi sat on the ground, and Easter sank to her knees and looked at his bleeding back. She embraced him around his waist, and he buried his face in her neck. They both cried. 
Jason stood next to them, patting Obi's shoulders tenderly and sniffing loudly. They stayed there for a time, drawing comfort from one another. Then the stalks parted and the three of them jumped. Martha, face drawn and her lips set in a thin line, handed Easter clean rags and a bucket of water. She wore her field dress and the bonnet that she wore while she worked. Mistress, why master let Wilson beat us? Easter asked tearfully. Get to work before Wilson comes, Martha said. We'll talk later. Thank you, mistress, Obi said softly as she left. Easter wet one of the rags in the water and dabbed it on Obi's back. I didn't tell on you, Obi, Jason whimpered. Obi winced when Easter touched an open welt. I know. It ain't your fault. Jason's little face was twisted with worry. Wilson snuck up on me. Asked what I was doing. I told him I was making sure the old sow ain't round here. Sounding hurt and confused, he asked, Why, Master John, let Wilson beat us? Something's terrible wrong, little Jason, Easter said. Obi stood up when she finished. She took another rag and cleaned Jason's dirty face and legs. Take my mule and work this row. I talked to Easter a minute, Obi said to Jason. Jason stroked the animal as it moved down the row of stalks. Easter, I ain't waiting for them soldiers to come get me. What you do then? Get away from here? You running? She whispered, looking frightened as if she might cry. He nodded. She stared at the ground. What about me and Jason? She asked. Obi looked toward the house and spotted Wilson's walking toward them. Here, Wilson, come. Talk later.